Welcome to an out of the park 25 video where I've simmed the 2024 regular season. This is a video I like to do when the game first comes out for a few reasons. One, it's just fun just to watch like a random simulation of the season and how it plays out. But two, like it kind of gives me a feel for some of the things, you know, I look at how trades went down in the season, the offensive totals, different things like that. And I'll, I'll build some videos out off of that. Probably this video is just focusing on the fun aspect of it. How did the season go? What were some weird things that happened? Um, and we'll, we'll go through the postseason too, but starting the video here at the end of the regular season, beginning of the postseason, you can see this is how the, the bracket shakes out. The Rangers and Orioles, which is really just rude to Orioles fans to have them face the Rangers again in the, uh, in the postseason so soon. Uh, the Red Sox and the Mariners, then the, the Guardians get a bye, and so do the Yankees. We'll get the standings in a second. Over here, not a big surprise to see the Braves get a bye. Uh, Giants getting a bye, I'd, I'd say that's a bit of a surprise. And then we've got the Brewers against the Dodgers in a wild card round, and then the Mets against the Cardinals. So looking at the actual standings, Yankees won 96, 90, and the Red Sox got in with 83 wins. Guardians won 98 games. Mariners won 89. Rangers got in with 86 wins. The Braves are the top dogs with 104 wins. The Mets getting in with 84. And then Cardinals with 90. Brewers with 90, 84. Sorry, And then Dodgers just winning 88 games. Getting the wild card. And the Giants winning 91. Expanded standings wise, you can see... The Orioles were the best team in the East, according to run differential. They just, uh, I mean, they even went 26 and 18 in one run games and eight and six in extra innings and still were four below their Pythagorean. And the, and the Yankees just had r really good luck in one run games at 30 and 15. So they were plus six. The Braves at plus 235 just like lapped the field here. Yeah, that's uh, the Braves came out strong here. The Rangers minus 10, their Pythagorean. They won 86 games with a plus 153 run differential. They were just 19 and 28 in one run games. Couldn't couldn't shut the door. Uh, some bad luck there. But let's get into some of the uh, some of the stats from the season. We'll start with let's look at the American League batting leaders. You can Marcus Simeon wins the batting crown. Alvarez. Benintendi, Andrew Vaughn, and Yoshida uh, round out the top five. Aaron Judge hit 49 home runs. Uh, Garcia, Alvarez, Langford, you're going to see his name a lot through here. Julio Rodriguez, similar names over in the RBIs. Uh, not a big surprise to see Juan Soto lead the league in OBP. How much, what was his war total in his walk here? 5.6 in 138 games. I did one sim. I, I might have had something on the channel about it. I think maybe he put up like seven or eight war. Uh, in his walk here, in out of the park 25. But war, Marcus Simeon is just running away with it. 1.3 war above the next closest guy. So he's probably going to win MVP, I think, if there's any justice in the world. Uh, Adley Rutschman up there, shout out. Eloy Jimenez, shout out to him for just showing up. Uh, it was a rough year for him, though. Showing up and playing every day uh, for his bad team. Good job, Eloy. Um you know, we we're, we're, appreciate the effort, but the results were, were, were mediocre, below repl replacement even when we work in your, your defense. But Wyatt Langford, 177 hits, 118 runs leading the league in both categories. Devers and Semyon both with 47 doubles. This is rude to have Gunnar Henderson's name on here for uh, caught stealing. I'm not sure that uh, Gunnar Henderson should be up here for a negative thing. That seems, uh, yeah, come on, man. Wyatt Langford led the league in total bases as well. <laughs> Juan Soto and Aaron Judge, they just walked all year long in New York. And then I guess they got driven in. Aaron Judge with a 170 OPS plus. Jordan Alvarez with a 411 Woba. So that's the American League uh, batting leaders. Let's look at the National League. Wow, Matt Olson hit 59 home runs. Matt Olson won the Triple Crown. Matt Olson put up 9 war. Holy wow, look at this year from Matt Olson. 333. Let's just look at his. I mean, well, first of all, just look at all the things he led the league in. Okay, here's Acuna. That one's Acuna. But average home runs, RBI, slugging, OPS, war, 195 hits, 102 extra base hits, ISO, OPS plus, WPA, WOBA. 
or yeah, do we call it? I mean, I should probably just call it win probability added, but WPA, whoopa. Uh, Olsen, man, he went off. 42 doubles, 59 home runs. He scored 125 runs. He didn't steal a base, though. The bum. Wow, what a year. Nine war. All right, I'll, I'll move on so I don't just keep saying, wow, wow. All right, let's look at the pitching leaders in the American League. But Matt Olson, man, shout out. Logan Gilbert wins the ERA crown. Corbin Burns, Orioles ace Corbin Burns is up there. Uh, J.P. Sears, yeah, you're going to lose 18 games when you play for the, the A's. That's that's a bummer. But Kevin Gossman losing 15 games. Come on. What's up with that? Um, What else jumps out here? Ooh, Carlos Rodon, 250 Ks, 11.2 Ks per nine. Uh, Chris Paddock leading the league in strikeout to walk rate. Chris Paddock leading the league in walks per nine. Nestor Cortez lead, led the league in home runs allowed. John Gray leading the league in FIP. Logan Gilbert, a 190 ERA plus. Wow. Corbin Burns, again. Cool. All right. Um, I'm sure you guys are catching things here that maybe I'm not, but okay. Let's move on to the National League. Yeah, I mean, Freed put up 6.9 war. Uh, Spencer Strider put up 5.4 war. You can see just from, like, Strider, Freed, and Olsen why this team is, is so good. And, I mean, 14 Ks per nine from Strider. Good, goodness, goodness, goodness. Our war, Logan Webb leading the league. Now, I do wonder... You know, I kind of complained the other day about how Kyle Bradish was rated in this game. And I know he was hurt to start this, but how did he do? Eh, he was all right. He was okay. Not not the year he would get if he, he was, uh, if his ratings were a little better, like like they are in real life. <laughs> um, okay, so I think what I'll do now is I will, you know what, actually I can't help myself. First, I just want to see what kind of year a uh, couple of those guys had. Henderson, 4.9 war, decent, decent, decent. Jackson Holiday, 2.9 war, only an 83 WRC+. plus. He struggled at the dish. Oh, I need to add BABIP to my thing here. Set up my filters and didn't add BABIP. Rutschman, we already saw some of his numbers. Yeah, he was awesome. Corbin Burns. 4.9 war, 7.1 R war. Grayson Rodriguez was okay. Zach Eflin is apparently here. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll have some thoughts on the trading in this. Uh, I've glanced at it and I have some thoughts from it. Ryan O'Hearn led the league with 20, led the team with 29 home runs. So I'll sim the postseason and then we'll see how the postseason goes and then look at the award season. So uh, we'll jump ahead here. Okay, I know no one is going to believe me that I just simmed one season and saw how it played out. And in that season, for the second year in a row, I think, the Orioles won the World Series. Uh, out of the Park 24, pretty sure they beat the Padres in the World Series. And I'm sure I'm sure it was Paul Spore in the comments being like, this was rigged. This was just one sim. My wife is here. She wasn't paying any attention. So she can't really vouch for me, me but I think she'd vouch for me. This was just one sim. And the Orioles swept the Rangers. They knocked off... The juggernaut that is the Guardians in five games. And they beat the Mariners to deny the World Series appearance from the Mariners. And then they swept the powerhouse that was the Braves. Uh, so I want to bring your attention to a couple things. One is that Adley Rutschman won MVP for the ALCS and the ALDS. What's real interesting on a couple levels is that one, Tyler O'Neill is an Orioles player. But he won the wildcard MVP and the World Series MVP. And if you want to see how the worst trade in the history of Major League Baseball actually worked out for the Orioles, let me tell you a story about Tyler O'Neill. He won two MVP <laughs> he won MVP of two postseason rounds and he was acquired for Yanir Cano and Colton Cowser, which is about the worst trade the Baltimore Orioles could possibly make in the history of baseball. Um and, you know, just initial impressions of the trading just from this one sim is I think I'll turn the trading frequency down again and maybe turn the uh, prospect favoring, valuing up a little bit. I'm not really sure. I need to do something because it, 
it it's striking me as like similar to last season where there's a lot of trades and a lot of pros high prospects are traded for uh, really inadequate returns. Again, that's just you know I'm not trying to stir the pot or anything. That's just my first impression from this one sim and just glancing through things. But I love this Tyler O'Neill situation. The fact that they gave up Cano and Kowser to get him, and, and then he goes out, and he wasn't even—he was having a terrible year for the Red Sox, 78 WRC plus. But then he goes out and wins the World Series MVP. Amazing, love it. All right, so now I will take us up through the award season, and then maybe we'll just like look at free agency and who hits free agency. But we'll go up through at least award season here. But congrats, congrats to the Baltimore Orioles on sweeping the Braves. Uh, hopefully this will happen in real life this year too. And I promise I didn't fix this. I promise this was legit. Let's jump ahead. Award season time. We are looking here at the AL American League Gold Glove winners. Eric Fetty, Adley Rutschman, Ty France, Holiday, uh, Lewis, Baez, Soto, Grisham, Garcia, so two Orioles gold gloves. Obviously, I think Gunnar Henderson, wherever he played the most, third or short, he was obviously robbed since he's the best baseball player in the world. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't know what's up with the Yankees. Juan Soto winning a gold glove in left field. Let's uh, let's take a look at that. Okay, yeah, somebody – and I, I don't think there's been a new patch yet while I've been recording this. Actually, and this is a current save, so I don't know if it would fix it, but I did see something – I mean, his arm was six. Okay, I mean that's a really good arm. That's actually a crazy arm, but a zone rating of negative eight point one and a defensive efficiency of nine forty two is not normally who you see win the Gold Glove. I wonder. Somebody had posted. I don't remember if it was on the forums or the Reddit that there seemed to be something going on with uh, the the Gold Gloves in that the voting wasn't rec differentiating between negative and positive stats. Like just like, it was like took this as an 8.1 and compared it to the, all the, all the other numbers. So it could be that, or it could be everybody's like, wow, check out his arm. So who knows? But Juan Soto, congrats. Uh, this is one thing that kind of drives me nuts on this page is this is the only way to get back to it. And then you got to like reset where you're at, but you know, you live and learn. And Javi Baez did put up 2.7 war despite a 74 WRC plus. So he was just a monster in the field, I suppose. 17.9 zone rating, a 1092 efficiency. That'll that'll play. I don't know if I want to pay that guy 25 million dollars, but you know that that'll that'll play. That's a that's a good player to have on your team. If you ignore the price, Def, uh, on the National League side of things. I mean, looking at Adam Duvall here, I'm, I'm thinking something's going on. Uh, oh, wait, never mind. Sorry. Adam Duvall. Who was I confusing him with? I had somebody else in my head. He's not a butcher in the field, right? Um, but I'm not really sure why he went with a 3.8 zone rating. Efficiency was good. Arm was decent. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure why Adam Duvall won it, but, but he did. He did indeed. Uh, I'm trying to think of who I am confusing Duval with now. Anyways, that's escaped my brain. Uh, da, da, da. Manny Machado, love to see him win in a gold glove. Pache, Tatis, that all sounds about right. Let's dig into Tatis a little bit. 4.9 war, 144 WRC plus, 100, or, I'm sorry, 115 games. He missed six weeks with a strained oblique and then was day-to-day, -day, so towards the end of the season. So it looked like he just mixed, missed those six weeks. And if anybody wants to say the right click button works, it doesn't. It takes you back to like the league history page if you do that. So that's the most efficient way to get back when you're in the league news. Uh, Gavin Lux at second base. I wonder if Mookie played shortstop. We'll have to check that out. I'm not sure what they if they have that in this updated yet in this. Um, reliever of the year, Pete Fairbanks. Clay Holmes, but third place, Keegan Aiken, out of nowhere. 1.8 war, 2R war, excellent ERA plus, excellent FIP minus, strikeout to walk ratio is looking strong. Keegan Aiken, I mean, hey, if he can do this for the Orioles next year, y'all are in trouble if their bullpen's going to be that strong with Keegan Aiken leading the way. Let's see on the NL reliever. 
Edwin Diaz, not a big surprise. Andrew Nard Dog Nardy. Rudy Doo to do. Kyle Hurt. I don't know if I know that name. Does that make me a dummy? Maybe. It's a very top prospect. Fifth round pick of the Marlins. Oh, he's in this trade in 20... Okay. He won Rookie of the Month here. All right. Maybe I should know him. What has he done in real life? Oh, not a lot in the majors. Okay. Maybe I shouldn't necessarily know him. You guys may disagree. But I'm okay not knowing a guy in the Dodgers system who's pitched two innings pitched and... You know, if he's a reliever, et cetera. He's not on my dynasty radar at all. So more like Jackson Holiday and Samuel Basayo. Those are more my dynasty league radars. Uh, Taylor Rogers, yeah, okay. Out of the park, 24 legend. Jalen Beeks coming in fourth in the reliever uh, voting. Let's look at some platinum uh, silver sluggers, platinum sticks. Rutschman, oh, Andrew Vaughn putting up a real nice season there. Marcus Simeon with his monster year. Isak Paredes, Wow. He, uh, he did not fall off. Gunnar Henderson, well-deserved. He obviously deserved it. We've got... Uh, why isn't it showing me the WRC Plus for the... So for some of these guys... I thought normally it was just like standard across here. But maybe I'm making that up and it just shows their highlight stats. I'm not sure if that's my misunderstanding or a bug. You guys let me know. If it's a bug, post about it in the forums. If you come across bugs in this game... I know people post about it on the Reddit. Some people sometimes post in comments here and other YouTube channels, which is which is cool. But if you do that, also make sure you put it in the bug forum so the developers can look at it and help, uh, you know, it's just the right thing to do for the community. So make sure you do that. Uh, Gunner, then Jordan Alvarez, Julio Rodriguez, Aaron Judge. It's like a Julio season here. 5.6 war, 132 WRC+. Plus. Uh, I'm still figuring out my thing here. I, you know, I just kind of like went through and made a filter close to what I thought I would want. So this isn't finished. I kind of like stolen base and stolen base percentage though there. Did Julio play center field? How'd he do out there? Wow, 10.2 zone rating. Love it. Good job, Julio. And let's see. Where else are we going here? I hate how I lose my place every time. NL Silver Sluggers. You got William Contreras. Then the Braves here. Matt Olson and Ozzy Albies. Uh, Nolan Arenado. Wow, nice season from Nolan. Ellie De La Cruz. Love to see it. Bryant Reynolds for the Pirates. I got a sneeze. Can you guys hold on? <laughs> All right. I don't feel like cutting the video to edit that out. So uh, I'll just say, excuse me. Because I'm already having to like cut and stuff when like I'm starting to like uh, cough and my voice is gone. So I'm going to leave that one in. So pardon me. Corbin Carroll with 7.9 war and a 167 WRC plus. No, maybe I'm starting to feel like my man, uh, my man Gunner deserved a better, uh, better season. And here's his. Hopefully, Gunner will get an extension. Obviously, it's going to cost a lot more money than that, but would love that in real life. Uh, Corbin Carroll, come on, you guys are really getting to look at this one thing a lot, huh? Where were we? Where were we? Acuna. Shohei. Oh, I did notice that Wild, Wyatt Langford won the Silver Slugger for the NL. Let's check Rookie of the Year. Wow, just three people received votes. And it was mainly the Rangers, Wyatt Langford and Evan Carter. Too bad he didn't win the World Series, though, like the Orioles did this year. And then Kyle Manzardo. So Langford we already looked at. But, yeah, monster season and put up a lot of good boxcar stats, too. Box car, box score. Oh wait, the back worked that time. This back works, man. See, I was using the right click back, and that wasn't working, so I abandoned it and started using that. But I think this back bu back button just did it, man. All right, well if you guys were like, dude, what are you doing? I don't know what I was doing. All right, so Evan Carter also had a really nice season. Uh, is it gonna work? Kyle Manzardo of the Guardians. So what did Jackson Holiday do that he's not... Did we already look at that earlier? I, rec I Full disclosure, I took like a day and a half off from recording between the last like little part of this video and this one to try to let my voice be halfway normal. Okay, so... Oh, that's right. Jackson's bat really struggled. I've simmed this season a few times, like testing out different things, and he's actually hit really well in the two or three other ones I've done, but this one, uh, this alternate universe did not play out as well for Jackson Holiday. 
All right, let's go ahead and look at um, the NL. Mason Wynn taking it home. Mason Wynn with 5.1 war, 115 WRC+. Plus. All right, had to cut out there suddenly. It was a coughing fit came on. If you're wondering, like, man, Pat is, like, now the park 24. Now he's had, like, issues with cough and his voice a lot. I'm like, yeah, dude, I agree. He should see an ENT. Yeah, dude, I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm getting that done. I'm trying to figure this out. But it's like every time I get some sort of head cold or something or something my daughter brings or whatever, then it ends with me having a cough for like two weeks and like congestion. It's just been like the last year. It's been crazy. It's making recording with the new game. Having like a super acute case of it right now is making recording with the new game a challenge. But I'm trying, <laughs> trying to do it because I enjoy it. But man. All right. Anyways, enough about me. Mason Wynn. Crushing it in the field. Solid season at plate. Way to go. And who else? Oh, Jackson Trio. Oh, Yamamoto. One first place boat. I mean, that's a really good season. Two hundred. He led the league with 271 Ks. 5.4 war. 4.3 R war. His ERA was 3.89. A FIP of 3.48. You can see the ERA plus and FIP minus there. That's a really good season from Yamamoto. Now, what's his contract again? Is it like... Okay. Cool. I assume that's the right one. I, I don't I don't really know the details of his contract. Um off the top of my head. Jackson Chirio. Stud. Three war. One sixteen WRC plus. Was he like not great in the field or something? I feel like it should be higher. Oh wow, yeah, he was really bad in the field. Zone rating, arm. It's interesting. I mean, I know this is just OSA that I've got here, but I think he would play a little bit better, especially with the zone zone rating, but uh, hopefully they can get that figured out, or else maybe they'll shift him to a corner where he'll be a much less valuable player, but still a great hitter. Kyle Harrison, Jackson Merrill is a name that I like, Severna Park, stand up. Uh, where did, he, so he, wait, what? This guy got votes of the 101 WC Plus, negative point one war, where were they playing him in the field? Oh my god, they're playing him in center field? What's his, what are the, okay, A, what are the Padres doing? B, what's his center field? Man, his zone rating is... His outfield range is a 65. I don't know what's going on with that. If that's just like... And I know this is like scouting. It's not scouting turned off. So this isn't necessarily totally accurate. But it's really, really surprising to see a guy with a negative 16 zone rating when he has a 65 range. I mean, 65 range isn't perfect for center field i prefer like a 70 but it's it should be passable playable i mean to be league average with the bat and then two war is about league average over a full season he's he's below replacement level because his glove was so bad but he still somebody still thought that's my rookie of the year right there i know i gotta hit this back button a million times he's still got three third place or three second place votes i guess like his three family members had votes kyle harrison james woods James Wood, good to see it. Brandon Hyde, Orioles manager, getting manager of the year, even though, you know, that's normally voted on before the, uh, I don't know how it works, if, if like out of the park factors the postseason into it, to be honest. But anyways, he won. He won despite his team. Um, his team wasn't, his team was good in the regular season, but not the top team, but they won the World Series. So uh, Brian Snitker, that's not surprising. They were dominant. Cy Young, We've got uh, Shane Bieber taking every first place vote. And Gilbert and Burns rocked out the, rounded out the top three. Shane Bieber led the league in war. Man, Zips loves some Shane Bieber, huh? Expecting a bounce back this year. That's, I mean, good for him. And he signed a five-year, $125 million extension that the Guardian's going out and making a splash to keep a player around. Good for them. But just a dominant season from Bieber you know, some of that is a really good strikeout to walk rate, even though he didn't strike out a ton of guys, but kept the ball in the yard big time and had a good BABIP. So way to go, Shane Bieber. Proud of you. His FIP was a run more than his, a run higher than his ERA, but it was still much better than league average, just not as good as his uh, ERA, obviously. Uh, Logan Gilbert, Corbin Burns, Tristan McKenzie, Pablo Lopez, who, of course, always look for a reason to give Luis, Luis Castillo content here on the channel. 
solid season from Luis with a 110 ERA plus and 88 FIP minus. Uh, thanks. It was 15 and nine was his record. Also, we'll always look for an excuse to give Kevin Gossman content on the channel. Uh, 14 and 15, which is a little rough, but it looks like maybe not his fault. ZRA actually, he actually had really bad batted ball luck, I suppose. 333 BABIP, maybe some bad fielding. 103 ERA plus, but a 75 FIP minus. So, you know, would like would like to see uh, the Blue Jays help him out a little bit more next year. But recognized by the voters, though, as a solid season, even if it didn't look great from an ERA stand or record standpoint. Uh, let's see, NL. Max Fried came in second. We'll look into that. Logan Webb, wow. All right, so Max Fried. You know, Max Fried is a very good pitcher. I need a sip of tea. All right, I had to stop again. I don't know, man. This is this is rough. Uh, <laughs> not like painful, but it's just, man, having to cut and stop and start, cough. Uh, yeah, Max Fried. I don't know, man. I know in the out of the park bug report for him. Someone said like he should be a little better, and uh, you know, I I think Lucas had said had said that he bumped up some stuff. I don't know. Is Max Fried like a? I mean, I know like look, I know twenty twenty two Max Fried is awesome. I know that it was health stuff, and he was good when he came back. I mean, he was awesome when he came back. But in he won the Cy Young in one sim. He's second in this one. Uh, we got to boost Kyle. We got to boost Kyle Bradish. We're boosting Max Fried. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Um, Spencer Strider, what did he do? Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty decent season with 14 Ks per nine and a very nice 2.69 ERA. That'll, that'll play. Joe Musgrove, even though he had, uh, some goober out there in center field who couldn't, couldn't field at all. He still put up a 2.92 ERA. Way to go, Joe. Just imagine if Jackson Merrill wasn't out in center field for you. Adrian Hauser got some votes. That's, that's not a name I expected to see getting Cy Young votes. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you guys. Didn't see this one coming, but he's going to go make some money in free agency, I suppose. All right, let's uh, round it out here. MVP, top three, Semyon Judge Langford. Oh, Bieber got fifth place. That's hard to do as a pitcher in this game, in my in my experience. Logan Gilbert's there. Adley's there. Andrew Vaughn. Corbin Burns getting some MVP votes. Let's, let's check him out. 4.9 war, 7.1 R war. 2.69 ERA. Nice. 3.55 FIP. The Orioles won the trade. Bobby Witt Jr. Gunner. Logan O'Hoppy. Okay. Hey. Good to see you here, catch. Put up a 125 WRC+. Plus. How was he behind the plate? 3.5 frame. Okay. Okay, Logan. We see you for sure. Tristan McKenzie. Solid. We'll have Tristan McKenzie getting some votes there. And then Matt Matt Olson, we already looked at his season, obviously ran away with the uh with uh the uh all the third all the third, all the first place votes. Shohei Otani put up five war as a hitter with a one forty six WRC plus. And it looks like he came back and pitched at the very end of the year. And he threw nine and two thirds shutout innings across two starts. FIP was 2.87, um, and his his uh, stuff is looking good there. Uh, all right. Goldschmidt, Josh Bell. Josh Bell in this economy? 5.4 war and a 156 WRC+. Plus. I would love if Josh Bell had that season in real life. That, oh, here's Mookie. We want to check him out. He played shortstop. Put up negative 10.8 zone rating. What's his infield range? Yeah, 55. That's going to be a little rough. I'm not playing him at short if I'm managing the Dodgers. I'm honestly probably playing him. Uh, I mean, if I'm putting him on the infield, I'm putting him at third. But uh, I would be putting him in the outfield, I think. Yeah. But he did really well at the plate. But definitely dragged down the, the old war there, probably, with all that uh, negative zone rating. Let's see. Ooh, jean Hu Lee. Out of the park, 22-24, now real-life MLB legend, 4.6 war, 137 WRC+. Plus. And in the field, he wasn't bad. They had him in center. Are the Giants putting him in center? The money they gave him made it seem like they are. I haven't, I haven't followed anything about spring training about what's going on with him. But uh, be interested to see. I'll be interested to see how he handles center. 
because I know there's some question. Ozuna, oh, Gabriel Moreno, Lane Thomas, Alec Bohm. I'm going to do just a couple more things here. William, I'm going to check out Vlad for you. How'd he do? Oh, monster season from Vlad. Did they sign him to? Sign him to a three. This is a weird extension. Just three years, $97 million, And he has an opt-out after one year. Wow. Okay. That's a weird deal. Let's see. What did Bo do? They didn't sign. Oh, my gosh. Oh, okay. So he must have had a major, major injury because he only played 32 games. He was awful. He's going to go into... Oh, he fractured his finger in May and missed four to five months with a fractured finger. Had a setback in there. Man. Wait. Oh, that's a real-life deal. So he's got one more year left to boost that value before he goes into free agency. What a bummer of a year from Bo, huh? Let's check in on... You guys are like, do this team. Let's check in on Houston. Let me talk to you. Just want to see how Kyle Tucker did. Uh, okay season from Kyle. Not like an MVP caliber season at all. My dude, Chaz McCormick. Oh, come on. Just one war, 116 WRC+. plus. Was he injured or is he getting the Dusty Baker treatment even with Dusty gone? Oh, he had a hamstring strain. He missed five to six weeks. So new, ma new manager was playing him, which is smart. Good thing to play your best players. Really rough zone rating in center field from a guy with an OSA range of 60. Oh, they have Alejandro Kirk. How'd they get him? Let's see. <laughs> Wait, what? I didn't notice this when we were on the Blue Jays page. You guys probably did. But it was traded. So the, the Blue Jays traded Kirk to the Astros, and they got back Verlander and $13.7 million in cash. That's really funny. Verlander was not very good. His FIP was league average. His ERA was much worse than league average at 5.05, .05, but that's a really funny trade. But what about the... What about the... Uh, is it Diaz? Who am I thinking of? The catcher who just mashed for them when it came up. Where's my guy? Yeah, Yanir Diaz. He only got 82 plate appearances? Man, he's still getting dustied, even though Dusty isn't there. What a bummer. I'd be I'd be calling the Astros about acquiring this guy. Maybe not to catch, maybe not to catch, but yeah, he's a DH. Okay, maybe I'm not calling him. Anyways, guys, thanks for putting up with all the uh, all the I don't know the cough drop, the sniffing, the coughing. I'm trying. I'll try to cough, cut out all the coughing when I edit. But uh, thanks for watching. Congrats to the Orioles on their World Series win and. Uh, I'm enjoying Out of the Park 25 so far. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos, even though I haven't been able to put my best foot forward yet or record as much as I'd like. But, you know, it's a long and steady road here. And we'll, uh, we'll talk again in the next video. Bye.